Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Token Post interview. Today we have invited Mr. Tom Coughlin, the CEO of Kinesis Money. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. So you're here in Korea today, and the weather is like horrible outside. But what's your take on the Korean like, you know, environment so far? Yeah, sure. Well, certainly um, we've been overwhelmed with the interest that's come out of the <laughs> blockchain and cryptocurrency space. Um, we came in here for a couple of days, and that keeps on sort of extending out and extending <laughs> out with back-to-back -back meetings. So there's certainly a lot of interest here, and I think you know just the, the very fact of uh, the size of the cryptocurrency market here sort of shows that, why there's so much uh, interest here. So moving on to the initial interview, our topic of the interview today, Kinesis plans to create a new monetary system based on gold and blockchain. So how do you guys do it? Sure. So um, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we're doing. We are developing an entire closed loop, like end-to-end -end monetary system. So we're not just like a cryptocurrency, like a network or just a blockchain. We have the full end-to-end -end use. So a user can go in, um, basically create their own currency, mint it, in our, in our words, and then actually use it, like use a debit card, use like banking facilities, use it in everyday life. Um, and there's a lot of different benefits around actually coming into our ecosystem, our monetary system, and actually using it. I can go into each of those components with you, but uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe later. <laughs> so you guys are trying to per se revolutionize the financial system, the banking system. Yeah. So what, are, what is the big problem here in our current you know, modern world? Sure. Well, for money to be most successful and sustainable for the long term, it needs to be two different major things. And that is uh, an efficient medium of exchange. So basically, it's efficient for me to like, transfer value, like send money to someone else or send money to a business. Um, and also, it needs to be an effective store of value. So meaning it's going to hold its value in the long term. It's not going to go up and down in price so dramatically and be so volatile. And I can have confidence that it will retain its value over the long term, as money should. So, I mean, on the efficient medium of exchange, this is what has, uh, blockchain actually provides. Um, and that's why blockchain is so revolutionary, where I can connect with anyone in the world. I don't even need to know who they are and transact with them in a trustless, anonymous environment and transfer value to them. So blockchain does that, and we've adopted uh, what we consider to be the most uh, like a efficient blockchain, blockchain system, being stellar. And we've forked it and actually improved it for our own uh, needs. And on effective store of value, um, I'm a bit of a monetary historian. And if you actually look at monetary history, then the most effective store of value of all time in the monetary space is gold. Um, and it's been individually like, valued as money by ancient civilizations for like five or six thousand years all around the world. The thing is, it's just not efficient to uh, you know, be handing gold coins or walking down the street with a, yeah, a pocket yeah. full of gold coins. So we, we've taken the greatest store of value um, it isn't volatile like, you know, like uh, cryptocurrencies. It holds its, it's got a massive market and holds its value. Um, it's like an $8 trillion market. In comparison, I think, you know, all cryptocurrencies like 250 billion or something like that. So um, uh, how does gold and blockchain come together in Kinesis? So yeah, I mean, what we've done is we've taken like gold and silver, so the monetary metals, and we've put them into the blockchain. Um, we're not really a cryptocurrency. We've used cryptocurrency technology, but what it is, it's actually ownership of uh, gold or silver that you're actually uh, investing in and then using as money. So if I buy like one Kinesis gold coin, I'm buying one gram of gold that's sitting in our vaulting system that's spread across the world. That's so how it works. Then moving on to the end user benefits. Yeah. If a person per se were to engage in your platform, what exact benefits, you know, actual benefits would they receive? So yeah, I mean, we've got this like multifaceted guild system, which like really benefits everyone who participates in it. So, I mean, we have like a minter, and this is something highly revolutionary because we, we consider ourselves like a monetary system for the people whereby people can go and participate in the system and individually benefit, as well as collectively benefit um, um, uh, with the system. With the minting yield, someone can go create their own currency, and once they send, spend, or sell it, then they actually receive 
like a reward, a yield for doing so. So it actually incentivizes the use of the currency. The more they spend, the more reward they get, the more, greater the yield. Same with just holding it there. Like uh, if you just hold it like a bank deposit, like a Kinesis coin, you actually get a yield as well in our system. Um, and the yields are most likely going to be much higher than, like, than with a bank because, you know, bank interest rates are very low all around the world. And the way this, this is done is through a sharing of the transaction fees. Mm -hmm. um, so we share in the wealth and the economic activity of the entire system. So it's not debt-based, like uh, the banking system. I don't have to, you know, with, with the banking system, I, I go give my money to the bank, right? The bank now owns my money and they can do whatever they like with it. And they're supposed to give me, you know, a reward in return, but, and that's in the form of interest, but that's not very high at the moment all around the world, and I take risk with the banks. So, like you said, gold has been around for thousands of years. However, the reason why it wasn't implemented as a standard currency was, it be was because it was, it was impractical. Not everyone can own, go own gold, right? Well, back in the ancient times, it was used as currency. Um, but, you know, these days, yeah, it became more and more impractical to actually use it. But this is where the blockchain comes in and being able to, you know, the, the evolution into mobile digital devices like your phone or even the debit card, whatever is like the most, uh, you know, practical or efficient means of being able to transact it, we've put, we've taken gold and we've put it into the digital age. And this is how we're remonetizing like gold, gold and, and precious metals for, for the future, for a successful and sustainable future. So while the value of, go a value of gold is sustained, you are creating an operation like supply chain so that everyone can have the entitlement, entitlement of the gold itself. That's correct. Like, so yeah, I mean, it's, we, the, that's what the blockchain does, you know, it creates that sort of chain of integrity, transparency. You can transact knowing that, you know, you're going to get paid and it doesn't matter what. That, that, that's really what the, the blockchain does. And yeah, that's, that's what we've, we've introduced gold in there. And, I mean, it's worthwhile mentioning this has come out of an established organisation, an institutional exchange founded in 2011 as well called Allocated Bullion Exchange, ABX, so abx.com. And um, we face some of the largest entities in the precious metal space all around the world and we have partnership deals with actually the likes of even the Indonesian Post Office, PT Pos or Deutsche Borsa, one of the largest exchange groups in the world. And the gold and the precious metals, it's, it's safely secured in these vaults all around the world that we have with some of the oldest sort of vaulting partners that we have in, in, in all the world. So everyone can rest assured that it's secure and they can transact in it in a very secure and efficient environment. Speaking of vaults, when people say gold, they yeah. think like there's a like gold bar stacked in you know, your house vault, you know, basement, right? So, uh, and the current hurdle that the crypto you know, space is facing is security issues. Yeah. Constant hackings are threat threatening the environment here today and Korea just suffered huge amounts of hacks as well. Yeah. So do you guys have measures to prevent the hack of the operation chains that you have, which connects the blockchain and gold? Yeah, sure. So I just mentioned, yeah, the vaulting space and it's, uh, I mean, these are big secure facilities um, worth tens of millions of dollars and you can't just break in, you know. Uh, and they're also operated by like 150 year old sort of organizations that have been around for a long time and also all like 100% insured. So if something does go wrong somewhere, <laughs> it's, it's insured anyway. But on the, like on the, I guess the blockchain space, I mean, yeah, as part of our uh, monetary system, we also have developed an exchange, mm -hmm. uh, like a blockchain exchange. I mean, we come out of the exchange space. The team that built ABX, mm -hmm. the institutional exchange for precious metals, has also built this platform. And it's actually like a, a decentralized um, blockchain exchange. So it's on chain. Instead of, say if you take Mt. Gox, for example, you have to send your tokens or cryptocurrency to them. Yes, to it's their wallet. To their wallet. It sits in their house account, their house wallet. And then that wallet is subject to getting hacked. Whereas in our case, people keep it in their wallets until they want to transact in it, until they want to sell it. So um, they can either, you know, keep it, I guess, in the cloud, where it's still very difficult to hack individual wallets in the cloud, mm -hmm. or they can actually take their coins and, you know, put it in a, you know, um, uh, out of the online environment in a USB drive or in a, you know, a device that they can store. So while the project seems very prominent, uh, it is, since you guys are targeting to become a currency, 
it is important to see the real life products. So sure. when can the audience expect real life adoption of this Kinesis currency? Yes, yeah, certainly. So, I mean, at the moment we have one offer open, which is we call our uh, Kinesis Velocity token. And this is open and people can like subscribe and, and invest in that right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that will come, our public sale, um, sorry, our pre-sale finishes um, in September. And then, so next month. And then actually uh, we, we, we um, our public sale um, finishes for that in November. But then we go into our next offer. And our next offer is for the currencies, the gold and silver backed currencies that everyone can benefit from and receive the yields and the benefits and basically use our platform as a banking system. Um, that, that starts in November and basically we go full live with everything, the full monetary system, um, next March. So people get sent their debit cards, they have online banking in any currency, not just our Kinesis currencies, um, and everything will be streamlined, super user friendly, super rewarding, and basically we'll be offering, you know, like real money with real yield, and it's it, and it's it's really really easy to use as well. So you guys are a professional platform managing in currency, and the yep. current limitation cryptocurrency is facing is the real life adoption. How the blockchain is going to seamlessly affect change our lives. So what's your spec speculation on the future of blockchain tech and the adoption of cryptocurrency? So, I mean, blockchain, it, 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 it brings so many efficiencies that mm -hmm. solve so many problems um, to so many different industries, not just the monetary space. I see a lot of problems with cryptocurrency and obviously with the, the legacy incumbent banking system as well, um, with costs and efficiencies and transaction times and all that sort of thing and volatility. We, we bring a lot of benefits there. But what blockchain is doing is it's, 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 it's facilitating this efficient way to basically share information or transact all around the world. So I see a, a bright, bright future, obviously, for blockchain and blockchain technologies. Whether what will happen in the cryptocurrency s space, I don't know, but you know, like the value is as good as what the, uh, the, the, the technology is. Whereas what we're, what we're doing is we're bringing like a tried and tested currency. It's been tried and tested for like five, six thousand years. And it's like the currency of the universe made by, made by the universe and accepted all around the world as a universal currency. So we've brought that into, we brought tried and tested currency into the innovative cryptocurrency space, blockchain space. Well, that is all the questions we have today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Mr. you very Conklin. much. Thank you for having me on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Tom Coughlin, the CEO and founder of Kinesis. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Cheers.